Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Laurent Bukabza and today I'm going to play and present for you the third movement of the fantasy in C major opus 17 by Schumann. But guess what? You can hear the whole fantasy without interruption, no ad, by clicking on the link above. You become a member and that's it. You can become a member, no worries. Just click on the red button in here and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to share. Now let's listen to this last movement of this fantasy by Schumann.
What a way of ending this fantasy, right? So let's talk about what I like the most in this piece. Again, I'm not going to go into details about the form because the form is pretty complicated. We're gonna start with an introduction. To connect that C major to A major is just genius. Actually, just one small change makes the whole difference. It could have been C major, A minor, and F. Which is... I'm sorry, but this is the chord progression he's using, except he's doing... to the ending that notes that comes out of nowhere is that note suspension and that's what's so magic in this movement everything is a suspension is a dream hoping for that wonderful life he's hoping to have one day with Clara when he's married and then But instead of A minor, we go to B flat. And now... So tension in D7. And although we're in A minor, it doesn't sound desperate. We're on the suspension. And now we go someplace else. Which... So harmonically speaking, really far. And there's that E flat. That result here. So. And I think that's absolutely gorgeous. And now listen to the chromaticism at the left end. measures will never be repeated. So it seems that the piece that's going to be repeated later on starts here. The fantasy should have been dedicated to Beethoven because they wanted to build a statue to which Franz Liszt fundraised money for this, but it actually never happened. So the fact there's a little Beethoven in here, not a coincidence. At measure 23, that section I truly enjoy. to this section at 26 when we may believe that these are on the beats but are all off beats. I'm going to put an accent on the beat to show you how it could sound except Schumann never wrote it this way. But instead of pam 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 the second note that should be the downbeat and makes us feel comfortable is in syncopation. So I play right before. 
for the beat and instead of which will be the end of the piece modulate to that new section that transition to that section we're gonna have right now that says advance the vector which means a little faster, a little livelier. We're gonna have very unexpected harmony. So I'm adding a big crescendo to pianissimo. So not only I'm creating that contrast to pianissimo, which is very Beethoven-ish once again, but harmonically speaking, and then it repeats again. Instead of we go G minor. So something I want to say to everybody because it's important. The art of repetition from Schumann that I mentioned in the first and second movement, you can look at the previous movement I posted already. Here we have repetitions of the exact same elements, two measures, two measures, two measures, two measures, and so on. But the first time we have this, the second time we have something else, and the third time we have something a little bit different. To show you that even when he repeats, Schumann wants to make things a little bit different. So the first time my accompaniment does and the right hand does no roll on tendo. So there are the three elements we need to pay attention to. The second time the accompaniment is so the left hand is continuous there is no and but with retardando and now a tempo. Let's sum them up. The first time the accompaniment is without these interruptions. The second time, no interruption on the left hand. And the third time, interruption at the right hand, but not the left hand. The first time, we don't have a roll at the end of these two measures. The second time, we do have a roll and and the third time, we do have a roll and So it gives us three different versions of something that sounds somewhat similar but it's not. We arrive at 44 with that theme that seems to come out of nowhere. But now they're going to be both hands very clearly two octaves apart to so the male and the female, Clara and Robert. Two, we'll have these moments that are transposed the first time with this tretto, these lines that enters back to back. Another bit. And that's gonna be repeated to here. So to arrive to that theme that developed. Scream with a progression by half step. So it sounds like victory. It's done. It's happy. We have that absolutely amazing chord that I cannot not play for you at 69 third beat. the exact same element we had the first time, first time happy, here it's a little darker I find it incredible that that chord shows up in here
to that middle section. I'm at measure 91. same element then that theme he's gonna cut it short instead of doing it twice to two octaves apart the same progression recognized that's gonna transpose to the same progression, to arrive to the same screen, that's a Ritardando, still Ritardando, and now a coda. That takes back the same progression that we had at the beginning. So he's waiting for the coda to think about the introduction, so C major, A major, but now not as major but D flat. Incredible. C. is there, we have it. I love that. And then. Very long note to finish. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. You can of course follow me on all social media, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or on my website that you can see underneath, laurentbookabza.net. If you want to take private lessons from me, you can always contact me on my email that shows underneath, laurent.bookabza.pianist, without the E, at gmail.com. And I'll be delighted next week to present you all 24 preludes by Chopin. So, don't forget to subscribe right now becoming a member and then you can listen to all 24 preludes without interruption no as no explanation also see you next thank you very much bye bye now